Hello, this is Arpan Gupta and today I am going to discuss about uh, one of the deep learning problems which is uh, image classification and we are going to implement uh, in this image classification and in the KRS which is uh, built on top of TensorFlow. So somebody who already knows uh, what is uh, convolution neural network, how does this work for image classification? It is for those and uh, they can uh, learn the implementation so implementation in keras require doesn't require a lot of lines of code so it will be very small lines of code so uh, once you know about what is convolution neural network uh, this will be this uh, lines of code will be very easy for you to implement in keras so let's see so we will be taking the uh, very simple data set which is mnist data set which is a collection of images and uh, these images belongs to one of the numbers like 0 to 9 so we need to classify that whether a given image is uh, is which of the digit between 0 to 9 so we we need to classify so it is a classification problem multi classification problem so it will be 10 classes and each of these classes will be a digit from 0 to 9 so before we begin uh, our implementation in keras let's import the libraries which are required for for this kind of uh, implementation so let's import so we will be importing the numpy and matplotlib and then we need some extra libraries and uh, these will be like keras so inside keras we are using the data sets and models and layers uh, you must be knowing about the different kinds of layers which are required in the convolution neural network these are dense dropout flatten convolution and max pooling so we would require all these so once uh, you import all these we need to fix the seed as usual uh, so that we can reproduce the results then let's uh, load the data set uh, which is inbuilt uh, in the keras so we will be right this is the this is the line of code which will be uh, dividing the data set into training data set and the testing data set and they're corresponding the target values so y underscore train will be having it will be a one dimensional vector right now and it will be having the classes from 0 to 9 so if you want to see the say train df shape you see you will see that its shape is 60,000 by 28 by 28 it is because we have 60,000 images and each of these image is 28 by 28 now if you if you see the shape of the y underscore train it is a one dimensional numpy uh, array and uh, 60,000 because we have 60,000 images so and these are all of uh, numpy arrays so if you want to see how how these images looks like in numbers we can just take one uh, uh, observation like train here fifth observation uh, you can just see here how does this array looks like so it has numbers from 0 to 255 so max value is 255 and the min value is 0 so the image is encoded as numbers like this so now if you want to see how does this train df uh, fifth element looks like fifth element of this uh, that is the sixth element of uh, this training data set how does this looks like we will be using matplotlib uh, and then we will write plt.im show and then train df and uh, fifth index and then we are seeing in visualizing it in a gray map so just this is fifth index of uh, training data this is two so this image belongs to uh, digit two so if you want to see how this uh, say 15th indices of uh, training it is uh, seven so like this we have 60,000 images and we need to classify each of these image into one of these classes before uh, we feed it into the training uh, feed the training data and the testing data for the validation into the keras we need to reshape these numpy arrays and the shape should be a four dimensional uh, array and uh, well first dimension will be the number of samples which is uh, right now 60000 so we are putting a uh, train df dot reshape and first uh, dimension will be uh, 60000 which is train df dot shape and the zero th element will be 60000 and then we, we will put the number of channels or pixels here we have a gray image so it is having only one uh, channel so we are putting one 
had it been our RGB image, it will have three channels. So it is since it is the gray, we are putting one, and then we are putting 28 by 28, which is the size of uh, this image, and we are converting into the flow type. Let's run this line of code and then uh, we are normalizing it. All the numbers will be normalized from uh, 0 to 255 into 0 to 1 scale. So we just need to divide it by 255. So the numbers which are 0 will be 0 and the numbers which are 255 will be scaled to 1. And in between numbers will be ranging uh, between 0 and 1. So just uh, after scaling, we just need to convert this target variable which is y underscore train and y underscore test. We just need to convert into the um, one hot and cold vectors. Right now, it is a one dimensional vector y underscore train. Uh, after we convert into uh, this one hot and cold vectors, it will be uh, 60,000 by 10 because we have 10 classes. So, one column for each. So, it is a dummy variable kind of thing. So, let's run this code. And if you want to see how this uh, now how this y underscore train looks like so it will look like like we have 10 columns and 60,000 observations so it is after one hot encoding the number of classes are 10 now we are going to fit the model architecture this is the thing which you must be knowing from before what is convolution neural network so so let's define the function uh, let's say the function name is model arc and uh, we will use the function sequential and then we will add uh, all the layers uh, step by step by just using model dot add and inside that you will uh, give the name of the layer which you are adding it so starting from the sequential and then add each of these layers the first layer is convolution 2d layer where we are using the 30 feature maps and each of these feature maps will be 4 by 4 filter size and the input shape to this uh, convolution layer will be one uh, by 28 by 28 because one is the pixel size that is uh, the number of channels and so this is a uh, this uh, this is the shape of one of the images and uh, the activation is relu after this uh, convolution we, we we do the max pooling and the pool size filter will be two by two and then again convolution you you use 10 features uh, feature maps and you can change the feature uh, filter size by 2 by 2 or you can change you can do the experimentation with this convolution 2d you can instead of 30 you can put 60 or instead of 4 by 4 you can put 3 by 3 and same way you can uh, change the pool size as well so after convolution 2d you did the max pooling 2d then again you did the convolution 2d but dip with different number of feature maps and with different number of uh, different filter size the main intuition is that in each of the step uh, going forward in the sequential way uh, this model is trying to learn different features out of this data set so how uh, the each of these digits have curves in there so that it can discriminate between the uh, two digits so so this is the main purpose so so first convolution then max pooling then convolution then max max pooling then you are using dropout you can you could have also added more convolution layers and max pooling so the purpose for dropout will be just to reduce the number of connections so say we have second layer and third layer we have all the connections that, that is fully connected instead of using the fully connected layer we are just using 30 percent uh, of these a dropout that means uh, 30 percent of the connections will be disconnected and only 70 percent will be connected between any of these two layers so since uh, till uh, this dropout we have an image in the form of 2d and then after that we need to convert into the uh, 1d vector so we can use the flatten function after this flatten this is converted into the 1d vector and then now you can use the dense function to uh, change this 1d vector into different shape so now you are converting into 128 with the relu activation and then again you are converting into 20 and then you are again converting into the num number of classes that is 10 so at last you will be getting the 10 uh, 10 neurons and it will be outputting the probability for each of these classes and for the last of that uh, last of uh, this dense function will be actually using the soft max uh, uh, activation once you have built all this architecture you can experiment with different kinds of architecture like convolution max pooling you could you have used dropout and then uh, you could have used again max pooling and then you could have used convolution different kind of architecture with different shapes and different uh, filter size and different things you can use different combinations 
at last you need to just write the model dot compile you need to give the name of the optimizer which is adam uh, like it is similar to the stochastic gradient descent or gradient descent and the metric is similar to the accuracy which we use and the loss function is uh, categorical cross entropy so here we have 10 classes the loss function is categorical uh, cross entropy and then it returns the model let's run this after this uh, we are just um, using this function model underscore arc and just putting it into the model and we are then fitting uh, using the model dot fit function and then we just give the name of that uh, training data set which is train df and uh, ye underscore train is the target variable which is one hot encoded right now and the validation set will be test df and the y underscore test this is uh, the data for which it will be uh, validating and giving the accuracy on this uh, data set so the number of epochs is uh, like how many times this model is going to run for all the samples so i am using the lower number of epochs so that uh, this uh, model doesn't take uh, too much time because it requires a lot of time to train this uh, model so and the batch size is that each iteration how uh, many number of samples it takes to um, uh, for the network to run forward and backward so that it updates the weight so uh, at each step it is taking 200 of samples out of the 600 uh, 60000 samples and uh, so at each forward propagation and the backward propagation it takes 200 samples so it will take a lot of iterations to complete one epoch so once you have fitted uh, this model uh, i have already fitted because it takes a lot of time so if you run this thing uh, at last after some time it will say maybe 15 or 20 minutes uh, i have a 16 gb of ram so it takes around 20 25 minutes so uh, if you run this line of code you see the evaluation of uh, this model into the testing data and y test the, it is showing the loss from loss value is 0.57 the, in the first epoch after the first epoch and the accuracy is 81 percent on the training data set and on the validation set it is 96 percent after the third epoch it is uh, the validation accuracy for the train testing data is 98.22 and finally uh, the error on the testing data is around 2% that is 1.78% so that is uh, quite good if you want to change or uh, want to increase the, the accuracy or just decrease this error you can just increase the number of epochs and experiment with this, this uh, batch size and you can just change experiments with the convolution uh, parameters and the max pooling and the dropout ratio and you can just change the architecture and see that what epochs are the best uh, for this kind of problem so for this demo purpose it is uh, quite sufficient to see that uh, this kind of model is working quite good on this uh, so let's see uh, what is the summary of this function uh, this model and if you click on this uh, you will get something like this which is uh, showing the layer by layer what layers we have used the first layer is like 30 feature maps 25 by 25 this is the filter set after the convolution the first convolution layer like there are 510 parameters these are the connections between the two neurons uh, between the neurons of the two layers and then we are using max pooling and there you are using 10 feature set and uh, that is the shape actually uh, the feature uh, the filter size which you are using is 12 by 12 uh, here you you might be knowing that you are putting 2 by 2 so after 2 by 2 the output uh, output is like 30 12 by 12 is the output shape so image is being manipulated by max pooling and then it converts us so 30 remains the same in the, after the max pooling but this 25 reduces to 12 and this 25 reduces to 12 so it's like uh, reducing the shape of this um, uh, reducing the size of the image 2d image again uh, you do the convolution and then you are doing the convolution and the output of after this convolution will be uh this uh, 10 11 11 so it is again reduced and then again max pooling so you, you keep on reducing and then you use the dropout and then you flatten so after the flattening you get the shape of 250 and you then use the dense uh, layer to convert from 250 to 128 uh, one dimensional vector so 250 is also one dimensional vector and this is also one dimensional again you use uh, 2d uh, this uh, dense layer to convert into 20 uh, neurons and then 10 neurons at the last which is being using the softmax uh, function for um, uh, so as an activation function uh, here you get the total parameters that is around 36,638 parameters these are the weights uh, of the neural network which uh, convolution neural network which is uh, which this model is trying to learn and the total parameters are like 36,000 that's why it takes a lot of time 
so you could increase the number of epochs batch size you can change the architecture you can uh, do lot of things so i think uh, um this is quite good uh, error which is uh, means error is quite less and the accuracy is quite good so uh, if you have any doubts then you can just post your comments and then i would like to answer you and then you could also change your configuration and then uh, you can show me that what is the your best accuracy coming on your data set so thanks for watching this video bye bye